Hey, beautiful people. I'm extra, extra, extra excited today because today marks my 100th video upload. What? And to celebrate that, I'm interviewing Dane Reed, who is the author of Forget Having Children, I'm Having Fun. So we're going to have a fun conversation here in a few. So make sure that you sit back, get your popcorn, get something to drink, and tune into this wonderful conversation. Everyone, we have a great interview today. Uh, with me, I have Dane Reed, the author of Forget Having Kids, I'm Having Fun. Um, so Dane, introduce yourself a little bit and tell us um, briefly about why you, you know, chose to write the book. Well, um, thank you for the introduction. And again, thank you for having me on your 100th episode. And congratulations to you. This is really awesome. So um, cue the um, cheers in the background. Cue the cheers in the background. And we've been trying to get this done for, gosh, how many months? We've been trying to get our schedules coordinated and all of that stuff. So uh, finally, we got it done. Um, I'm Dane Reed. I am a voice actor. Um, I have been on thousands of commercials around the country, around the world. I've done, you know, hundreds of regular projects and all kinds of things. And um, I'm a world traveler right now. I'm in Medellin, Colombia, just um, for a month, just kind of hanging out down here. I needed to get away from the craziness of the United States. So I came down here and this city has a really great energy, um, you know, but I've been to 44 countries at this point. Um, that's just, that's what I enjoy doing and I enjoy creating. And one of the most awesome things that I've had a chance to create is um, this book, Forget Having Kids, I'm Having Fun. And really it's kind of a story that starts, you know, with me, and well, starts at the end where I, um, you know, decide to get a vasectomy and it rolls all the way through to the beginning where the ultimate of ultimates ha happened that caused me to say, yeah, it's time, <laughs> you know, so um, and everything in between. And it's it's a lot of craziness. It's a lot of over the top, but it's also a lot of good information in the book. And um, I wanted to make it so that I wrote a book that people were not going to be uptight about, you know, that they weren't going to be walking around like a penguin with their butt cheeks squinched up and everything. I wanted you to relax. I wanted you to have fun, you know, because, you know, I'm having fun being child free. Awesome. Yeah. And I picked up on a lot of that in your book. It's a lot of great humor in there, um, a lot of sarcasm. So, yeah, it was a yeah. fun book to read as well as very, you know, informative, too, and relatable. So, yeah. Um, Going back to your vasectomy, so was that when you decided to become child free or I mean, let's talk about I don't think I remember that in the book. What age were you when you when you decided you wanted to be child free? I was age zero. <laughs> Listen, you know, I go through I go through a lot in the book about things like me being a little terror, right, as a kid. And um, and I also talk about me being punished for being a terror. And I I remember one of my earliest memories was standing in the corner after getting a whooping. I <laughs> think this life ain't nothing. <laughs> this is not a good life. Why would anybody do this to anybody? <laughs> right. So right. Um, no, I I I never wanted to have kids. There was a time where I entertained the idea of having kids because I was with a woman um, who wanted to have kids. So it was like, oh, yeah, well, that's kind of what you're supposed to do, even though I told her I was disinterested. And she was like, well, maybe we'll have one. Let's have one. And I was like, OK, fine, we'll we'll have one, you know. But it was, you know, we hadn't even we had even named the child and everything. But I genuinely wasn't interested in that lifestyle, right? The lifestyle that I lead right now is the lifestyle that I wanted to lead. You know, the lifestyle of being able to get up and, you know, 
come to Medellin for a month or, you know, being able to take my mother to to Israel and Egypt and, and to Paris, you know, that's, that's the lifestyle that I wanted to have, you know. Um, I believe in teaching and learning, but that doesn't have to be through the context of, of having children. You know, one of the things that I say to people when they ask me, did you always, when did you decide? Well, by default, we're all born without children, right? So we never had children. So if you have children, that means that you opt in, right? It's not a opt out situation. You know, people keep asking us, when did we opt out? We never had children, so we never opted out, right? You have to make a decision to have kids, right? So by default, I was born without kids. I just never changed anything. When you're born without kids and you decide to have kids, you're the one who changed something, not me, you know? So um, no one ever asked me, you know, how come I don't eat at McDonald's, right? No one ever asked me that. It, it It's like, I don't eat at McDonald's because I just don't eat at McDonald's. If you eat at McDonald's, then the question is, why do you eat at McDonald's? Why do you choose McDonald's over Burger King or why do you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's a really great point. Now, um, just going back to your, your uh, vasectomy in your book, you call it man abortion. I had never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Did hilarious. it get a laugh out of you? Yes. That was the idea to get a laugh out of you. Yes. <laughs> So, so for the men that's watching this video, what kind of um, advice do you have for them regarding getting um, a vasectomy? If they you know, have sense about it. Before I even give advice on having a vasectomy, I think it's important to determine like how many children you want or don't want, right? So, you know, I've given this advice to men who already have children, right? Like you already reach the maximum number that you want. You cut the valve. Just do it. You know, it. it's like men always think that once you have the man abortion, that you can't, like every, something's different, right? Like people were asking me, so man, do you know, do you still, you know, do you still get up? You know what I'm saying? Do you, how is the fluid when it comes out? You know, like all these very personal questions people ask me. And I'm like, nothing changed except for the fact that I don't got to worry at the end of the month. You do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I have no worries. You know, uh, I may go every, you know, few years and make sure that, you know, that there's nothing, you know, leaking out or anything like that. But I don't have any worries. So mm -hmm. the advice that I would give them is block out all your fears because they're unwarranted yeah right and then you said something too i watched your segment um on the child free convention the other day <clears throat> so, uh -huh. yeah and you said that you know one of your reasons for getting a vasectomy was because of all the implications that come with women taking birth control pills and, yep. I, and i gave you a major thumbs up because it showed that you have a lot of empathy for what we as women go through absolutely not absolutely. myself i don't take the pill but um you know <laughs> a lot of horror stories from women who are on the pill and just all the side effects and it's it's just not worth it you know yeah so i i know several women who are on birth control who um who have had strokes mm -hmm. you know but aside from you know the strokes okay maybe you say well i'm not going to be the one to have strokes you know there are issues with uh low libido for instance right so now you're a guy and you're like I want my woman to, to to take the birth control pill so we can get it on. We can be natural, you know, but then she starts taking it and then she doesn't want to have sex anymore. And I guess that's the form of birth control because she's not having sex. Right. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't want to do that. You know, well, you definitely won't get pregnant. <laughs> so. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's mad, right? Now, he, now he's upset. <laughs> you wanted her to get on a pill, so yeah. Um, you know, like we as men, we we just have to know the um, we have to know 
what's going on with a woman's body, how a woman's body works, right? If you have a partner, you know, you should know, um, you should even know when her period's coming. You know, these are things that you should share in a partnership. She should understand your your sexual health as well. You know, men's sexual health is often not addressed until, you know, we're in a situation where we have prostate cancer, right? So like, we should know each other's bodies and be empathetic towards what we have to go through, you know? Yep. Totally agree with you on that. A lot of people don't take that into consideration, but thanks yeah. for, for pointing that out. But I wanted to show you my book again. You see, I have a few tabs in here from things I wanted to uh, <laughs> to discuss without, you know, yeah. spoilers on the book too much, or I guess no spoilers at all. But um, some things that stood out for me was, um, you know, how relatable it was to my situation for not having children. Okay. Like, legacy and then you mentioned what else did you mention um I got some notes here sorry legacy um you know selfish and just the whole oh not wanting to clean you know wanting to clean break on page 173 yeah yeah when you break up with somebody it's a great feeling to know that yeah you have children to tie you to that person for the rest of your life <laughs> Listen, when I break up with someone, I don't want to pay them anything, right? I don't want to pay them attention, okay? <laughs> so, you know, to be to think that, you know, oh, gosh, I got to pay child support. In some states like New York and New Jersey, like you have to pay up to the time that they're either 21 or until they finish college, right? That's not fair, right? <laughs> like at 18, they can go into the military and get their own job, right? Like why are you still paying? So it's like, I don't want to pay anybody attention, right? Um, I I just want to go about my day. I, I want to, you know, pay my light bill, um, you know, pay my credit card bill, collect some travel points and and be out, you know? That's, that's the life that I want to live. For everything else, you know, they can have that, you know? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Now, um, the book design, talk to us about that, because me being a very detail-oriented person, I see, you know, the cities you possibly have traveled to, um, uh -huh. and I guess this, I know this, this is probably not you, but I, um, I guess the representation. It, you know, that's my actual, so every, every place that I go, I have this famous pose where I go like this, right? So, um, that, that's me, and that, that pose uh, from a psychological perspective represents freedom, right? right? So, uh, you know, I started doing it because I was expressing my freedom um, years ago in, in my pictures as I traveled. But there's other details about the about the book cover too, if you if you can hold it up, yeah. uh, you, you get that, right? Like, so a lot of people don't get that. So or the um the F O R G E T and scratched off the O R G E T. So it's just F having kids, right? So um I saw a book um that said F your diet and other things your thighs tell you, or other lies your thighs told tell you, or something like that. And the author was expressing on Facebook that she couldn't um she couldn't promote the book on Facebook anymore because it said, you know, it was it said. It had the real word there, right? And I was like, well, hey, I want to promote my book, you know? So I had to figure out a clever way to say F without saying F, right? So we we I sketched it out and it was like, forget. And I just scratched off the O-R-G-E-T. So yeah, a lot of people don't get that. So big shout out to you for getting that. You know, I'll pick up on a lot. I'll pay attention to a whole lot of things. So you can't get a lot past me people say that i'm quiet yeah. but i'm really observant so yeah it's the, it's the quiet ones <laughs> <That's what they're laughs> all right so um all right so um tell me about the process of writing your book how long did it take you were there any obstacles and things like that so you're an author so you know i know that you relate to the process um it took me about six months Mm -hmm. It was pre-writing. It was originally, actually, I was going to have my book ghostwriting written. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it and I was like, no one's going to express me and do me like I do me. Right. No one's going to. I I had spoken to some people and I was like, I want this to be humorous. And then I thought about it. And I was like, 
their idea of humorous might not be my idea of humorous, right? And, you know, being um, as a voice actor, I'm also a copywriter. And so I just, I just decided to start pre-writing my stuff and writing out some of the jokes, writing out some of the points that I wanted to make. I wanted each chapter to be easy to read. So you can read one chapter and then you get the point of that chapter and without having to go on, right? So it's it's kind of like each chapter is kind of subcontained except for uh, like the first chapter and then the book of Brittany and and then the last chapter, the book of Brittany part two, right? Like those chapters, you, you kind of have to, you know, read together and stuff. But everything else is like, if you just want to read one chapter, knock yourself out. Like it, it's good. You can read that chapter and not pick that book up for another two years. Pick it up again, read that, laugh your ass off, come back, you know, put it down and and then, you know, do it all over again. I wanted it to be an easy read um, because not everybody likes reading, you know, let's just be honest. Right. So if you don't like reading, this is the perfect book for you actually to read because of the way that I structured it. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a page turner, especially with, you know, the way the beginning started off. I'm like, wait, what happened? Then you have to wait till the end to get that that story. Yeah. But um, yeah, the first time I read it, it took me about two weeks to read it because I was working a pretty high stress job and have that okay. much downtime. But the second time around, it took me about four days. I had to reread it to, um, you know, set up this interview here. Yeah. So, great job with you know telling your story and all the examples and the jokes <laughs> it was really good <laughs> and so for yeah. those who aren't read the book yet it's roughly about 204 pages or is it 240 yeah 228 pages with all the intros and the and I and you know I put a lot of research into this book as well so there are references in the book um yeah so yeah Okay, so let's talk about, because I think me and you are in the same age group. Do you find that it's hard to find child-free um, friends, you know, being a little older? Not to, not to try to call you old, but, you know, beyond... I'm probably years. older than you are. Um, I won't ask your age, but I'm sure I'm older than you are. Um, <laughs> is it hard to find child-free friends in, our, in my age group? Yes. It really is. So, for instance, I'm I'm down in Colombia, and one of my best friends who has a whole chapter, Mike. Um, Mike has children, and he's supposed to be down here, and we're still trying to figure out whether or not he can get down here because you know he needs babysitters. And so, yeah, I I find it hard in you know I'm in I'm a Generation Xer, and it's more difficult to find people in Generation X. But the good news is that amongst millennials, millennials and Gen Zs, they're giving this topics a lot of good thought. I was at a panel the other day that I spoke at and um, my book was there and some people, some younger people, they said, so, you know, tell us about the book. And, and I summed it up by saying, listen, you have choices. And they all said there was like uh five women and two guys, they were like, yeah, we know we got choices. Trust me. Right. Like, so, so getting people who are younger on board, they definitely get it. Getting people who are, you know, uh, 40s and above, they still believe some of the myths about, oh, I need to have a legacy. Oh, I need to create a family and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's easier when you get young for the younger people because they are more thoughtful about the decisions that they make. Absolutely. Yeah. Back when I was their age, it was considered a taboo to even talk about being child free. Yeah. Many yeah. years I kind of kept that to myself. But now I see that, you know, like you said, they are they are coming around, they're being more vocal yeah. about the choices that they have. And to point out, so I'm 39, by the way. And I have a um, a cousin actually out there in Medellin right now. He actually lives there. Um, okay. Holy, he's thirty six. I'm gonna have to connect you two because um he's okay. child well, for the moment. Okay. All right. Wants children, but he doesn't have them right now. So I'm gonna connect you. I'll, I'll email. Okay. Both. He so he's childless. We are gonna convince him to be child free. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> and he's <laughs> super hilarious too. So I think y'all will get along really good. Okay, so. cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so as we wrap up here, um, tell us about what other projects you're working on. Are you working on another book or um anything that you want to plug um as we close? So out? right now, right now I'm not working on another book. Um, I'm sticking to this, I'm promoting it, I'm I'm having fun with it. Um, there's my normal voiceover work that I do all the time, every day. I've been doing voiceover work for 19 years and I'm having fun doing voiceover work and 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 traveling and, and meeting good people. I've met so many good people down here in Medellin. I'm on a tour to do all 50 states. So I'm at state number 44. I'm at 44 countries. I don't know, 44 is my lucky number, I guess. Um, I could, hey, Obama. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. You know, I really want as many people as possible to read this book. I want people to go to childfreebook.com, and um, yeah, that's that's what I'm working on. I'm working on myself. I'm working on peace. I'm I'm working on emotional um, intelligence. You know, I'm working on growing myself as a human being and blocking out all the noise. There's going to be haters. There's going to be people who hate on your channel. Yeah, they're, they're going to be haters. But, you know, none of those people pay any of our bills. So, right. You know, they can kick rocks. You know, what I like to do sometimes in the comments when they, you know, comment this crazy stuff, I go kind of back and forth with them and that helps to get my uh, <laughs> my views going and yep. kind of circulating. Yep. They're, they're helping us if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's, you know, that's what I said on Saturday in the Child Free um, Convention. You mm -hmm. know, keep hating, please. It gets the numbers up. The right. algorithm works for us. Exactly. You know, yeah. Controversy sells. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I do want to mention too before we close out is that you have another book. So I'll, you know, post the links to both books. And yeah. he also wrote a children's book called Dana the Procrastinator. Yes, the irony, right? I started off with a children's book. I used to work in the public school system. Okay. And what I tell people is when you work with kids, you find out that you either really want kids or you really don't. <laughs> right? Kids are going to make you pick one side or the you're not going to be in between working with kids. So, right. yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, this has been a great conversation. And again, congratulations on all your success thus far. We look forward to, um, you know, seeing you promote the book even more and just seeing where it goes. So have a great day and thank you all for watching as well. Mm -hmm.